Hi everybody, it's Patty, and I am here to show you a really fun card. I can't get enough of the beach theme. So we're gonna be creating something. It's a combination um, that I was inspired by Michelle Zindorf with her direct ink to paper technique that I've really been practicing, watching a lot of her videos, and Patty Bennett, who uh, put together this scene here with using the Paradise Palms um, stamp set from Stampin' Up. and. I put the two techniques in the scene together to create my own and I wanted to show you how to do this because I love how this card turned out. I love the vibrant colors and it's just such a beautiful card and it looks like it's really hard to make but it really isn't once you learn the technique. It's really addictive so I'm just warning you. Uh, so let's get started and I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so first of all, I will have all of the information and products that I use down below in the description bar, so check that out later. Um, I also put the dimensions of the papers that I've used as well. So I'm starting off with a uh, card base of basic white cardstock that measures uh, five by three and three quarters. And I'm using painter's tape, although Stampin' Up! did just come out with masking tape, so you might want to check that out. I, I have it on order, I just haven't received it yet. So I'm going to use this masking tape to block off my horizon. And before I apply this, I don't want so much sticky, so I'm just going to apply it to my clothes just to get some of that stick off. <clears throat> and then... I'm going to decide where I want the horizon, and you can tell from the original card, it's about mm, one and three quarter inches up from the bottom. And so using my grid pad, that's why I like this grid pad, uh, four blocks equal an inch, so one, two, three, four, and then another three is a three quarter inch. So right about there, I'm going to apply my masking paper. And I want this on the bottom. Because so we're going to do the top part first. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay. Right here. That way I get a nice even. Just press it down lightly because you're going to have to remove this. And you don't want it to rip your paper. All right. So first we're going to start off with four colors. We're going to start with So Saffron, Mango Melody, Calypso Coral, Flirty Flamingo. You can add colors how you see it in the sky, blend it how you want, but this is how I wanted to start. So I'm going to start with So Saffron. And the way Michelle describes her technique for direct ink to paper is she uses the short end of the stamp pad. She holds it at an angle, not flat, and gently drags it across that paper to put in streaks of color from the ink. So um, if you're if you'd like to turn the paper vertical, however you'd like to do it, just nice gentle strokes at an angle, tipped at the edge. And we're gonna start from one side and just pull it across the paper. And you can see how we're gently applying that. So saffron, if the paper for some reason jumps on you and, and you get this big mark, don't worry about it, it's a sky. I've made lots of mistakes and thought, oh gosh, this is not gonna look good. And it turns out you never even knew I made a mistake. And it's just like that's that, that little uh, color there. So that's why you kind of start from the edge and then drag onto the paper. Um, you can add as much color as you want, blend it. Just remember you're making a sky. So you're gonna add colors. If you don't like it, you just keep adding colors back in. So now I'm gonna take Mango Melody, do the same thing. Short edge, start from the end, just pull it across. Now you, you can, um, Add some streaks. I kind of like it a little streaky sometimes. Just it adds just dimension to that sky. A little darker over here. If you want a lot, if you want it real dark. And the ink does dry a little bit lighter. So it might seem really dark now, but once it dries, it is going to dry a little bit lighter. Um, next, I'm going to bring in Calypso Coral. Same technique. I'm gonna add just a little bit. See that kind of makes it pop. We've got that sun streaking in the sky, and you know, you've seen, you've all seen those sunsets where you just wish you could recreate it in a painting. 
And this is just one tip on how to do that. So it's, it's not a perfect science. Every one of your cards is gonna be different. Flirty Flamingo is what I'm gonna bring in next. That's what makes this beautiful. I'll show you a couple cards that I made. Now we're gonna add in that little pink hue. And you want some definition. You want to kind of make it lifelike. I've got some streaks here. I'm not worried about it because we're gonna do some stamping over top. I like it a little bit lighter down here in the center. And that is our sky. I'll close these up so I don't make a mess. Now we're ready to do our water. And <clears throat> I'm gonna use a new piece of masking tape because I don't want the color that's on this masking tape to go down into the water. So gently tear this off. You can see it's coming off a little bit on my paper. So try and get some of that stick off or get that new Stampin' masking tape or post-it note. I didn't have post-it notes that were wide enough for this paper, but those are some other options. Or you can just use a piece of scrap paper and tape it down on the ends if that helps you. So I'm gonna bring in a new piece of masking tape. Painter's tape, I should say, not masking tape. This is special painter's tape. Um, you can buy it at um, hardware store or pretty much anywhere, I think, if you, if you don't have access to the Stampin' Up! Uh, new masking tape. All right, took some of that stick off. I'm gonna turn this around and I'm going to apply right over. I'm gonna leave a little bit of edge there so I can see, so I get a teeny tiny bit of overlap on that horizon. And we're gonna bring in Coastal Cabana, Bermuda Bay, and Pacific Point to do our water. We're gonna start with a light color, Coastal Cabana, same technique. Now you notice my scene up top is a little darker on this side. So I'm going to start over here. So it's gonna be darker on the opposite side. If that's okay with you, then that's how you do it. Otherwise, keep it. See how my paper moved and I didn't have that down tight enough. That's okay, I'm not worried about that, that extra ink here because we are gonna um, cover that up with some stamping. So just some light. Now this is your water, so however you want it to look. I kind of sometimes squiggle it along. Let's bring in Bermuda Bay and darken it up just a little bit. Swoop it up here. Give it some motion. A little bit darker in the middle there. Now Pacific Point. Get deeper on the edges, lighter in the middle. If you are good at, if you're ambidextrous, you can take it from both sides if you want. I left that a little bit lighter on purpose. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. All right, so that is the base of our background. We use a lot of ink colors in this card, but you will see it is absolutely stunning when we're done. Okay. There's the base of our card. Let me get rid of this. Now, a lot of people like to create these backgrounds using blender brushes. I find it takes a lot more time and energy to use the blending brush, although it gives you a softer, I think, look than this, but I love this direct ink to paper technique. I've created so many cards since watching her videos. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. But before we do that, you see this kind of, uh, horizon line here it's not quite blended in between so we can take our mark our blending brush i'm going to bring in so saffron i'm just going to go over it gently 
the light hand and just kind of go over just a little bit. I don't mind having that little bit lighter here in the water as well because that's kind of like a reflection of the sun when we put that sun in there. So I'm okay with that. I just didn't want it white. And no, I do not have a color for every blending brush. I actually have three or four, whatever comes in the pack. And I just clean them by rubbing them on paper. I have one for orange, one for red, one for blues and, and greens, darker colors. But I only have four and I've had not a problem. So don't feel like you have to have a blending brush for every color. All right, let's bring in that Paradise Palms set. We're going to put some rocks in the bottom. So we're going to be using soft suede and crumb cake for that. We're going to be using the stamp here that looks like rocks or shoreline. We're going to start with soft suede. And we're going to add them down here. I'm going to stamp and then do some second generation stamp as well. We're just creating a shoreline. You want to turn it upside down to give it a little bit of dimension so it doesn't look like it's the same stamp over and over again. You can do that. Then we're going to add crumb cake to that and do the same thing. Just kind of fill in some gaps where we feel, where we feel it needs to be filled in. I kind of like that the way it is. Maybe just one more over here. Okay. Now we're going to add some palm trees. So I am going to use granny apple green. I'm going to leave the crumb cake and the soft suede out because we're going to need that for the trunk of the trees. So granny apple green and a um, little bit of accent. You don't have to do this, but just adds a little bit of dimension with a Garden Green Stampin' Up marker. I have both of the palm fronds, and I'm going to start with a big one. And we're going to ink that up in Granny Apple Green. We're going to take our Stampin' Right marker. This is the um, water-based marker. It's the same ink as what's in our ink pad. And just add some dimension in the center and on some of those leaves. And for those of you who have never tried the marker to stamp pad, it's, like I said, the ink that's in the markers is the same ink that is in our stamp pad. We're going to huff on it. So we're going to blow it to just kind of uh, reactivate that ink. <sighs> And we're going to put our palm tree in and we're going to put it in and then I'm going to stamp it a second generation by lifting it up, just tilting it a little bit and putting it back down. So you can see how that gives a silhouette effect and maybe blowing in the wind. I'm going to stamp it up again, but I'm not going to put the marker on this time. I'm going to put it back down and just shift it a little bit the other direction. And you can see how awesome that looks. So that's going to be my big palm tree. Now I'm going to add in the little palm fronds and do the same technique. So granny apple green. Add in some dimension with that garden green marker. <sighs> Huff it. Bring this down a little bit. 
stamp again. So that's the first generation. Turn it just a tad, stamp it down again for the second generation. Re-ink it in Granny Apple Green and come back and shift it just a little bit the other way. Same thing over here on this side of the card. I'm gonna go off the paper a little bit. I didn't add that marker to it, but that's okay. I can do it this time. You can see how that really looks neat um, when you do that and just shifting it just a little bit how it gives the dimension of it blowing and leaves kind of in the background just an interesting technique all right now we're going to add some tree trunks to our back uh our frame so i took a post-it note and i ripped off the post-it note just a little bit to give me a little bit of an uneven border and I want the um, palm trees to come down in these rocks or shoreline. And I have my tree trunk stamp and I'm gonna use soft suede. And then on the top of the tree trunk, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I should have started with crumb cake is what I meant, crumb cake for the full tree trunk, and then a little bit of soft suede on the top of that tree trunk. And then I'm gonna line it up. That's why I want that post-it note under there. It's gonna come off, you'll see what I mean when we do that again. So crumb cake, top part, soft suede. It's pretty well blended. Come in with this one. And then take that off. And switch it over here for the last palm tree. Like that. Now, if you feel like you need to blend a little bit more you're seeing too much of that water in the bottom then just take a blending brush and blend it with a little bit of crumb cake oops sorry you know a little bit of crumb cake if you want it to be a little more blended and not so much water or you can re-stamp the uh, what you call it? This one. <laughs> the rocks or the water's edge down here. So this is just going to just fade it a little bit. Just maybe towards the bottom on the sides. So it's a little bit foggier, if you will. We do have a stamp in that stamp set that is grass. So if you like that is this bottom is kind of dark but it, it does it does come out pretty well you can use the uh, green garden green marker or if you have the stamp pad here's just another technique you just take that marker on its side and run it over the stamp puff it again to reactivate the ink in case it dries and i'm just going to do some grass down at the bottom First generation, second generation, third generation. Can't really see it too much, probably in the camera. I'll show you in a second. But it's very, very faint, and that's what we want. Just a little bit. So you can see that down here at the bottom. All right, so if you want to, I wasn't able to get this to work, but if you wanted to block off a sun, then you would start with a post-it note. You would do that first so that you kind of get, you, you mask it off first, but 
with so the direct ink to paper, it's a little bit more difficult to do that than using a blending brush. So I'm just going to use the stamp that is the sun that is in that Paradise Palms set. I found that it worked very nicely for what I was looking for. And I used Cajun Craze and Pumpkin Pie to create that. And I took Cajun Craze and I took my blending brush and dipped it a little bit in pumpkin pie and just lightly tapped maybe around the edges of that sun. Huff it again, decide where I want my sun to be. I want it over here. And that was enough sun for me. So it was a lot easier than masking it off with a post-it note, that circle, and using the direct ink to paper. You can certainly do it if you're using a blending brush, but it doesn't work so well using the direct ink to paper. Plus, you get to use all the stamps in your stamp set. All right, so for the sentiment, I'm going to use soft suede. And the sentiment in, the, in this set, I love the sentiments in here. Lots of different ones. I love them all. But for this card, it has to be wishing you a relaxing, wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day. So I'm going to put this in and I put it right on. Make sure you do it the right way. Uh, right on the paper. Just like that. One other technique that you can also add is if you have a, if you have the Whisper White, this is the Craft Ink Refill. Just a little stamping block. Um, this never dries, so you can have it out here. You can either use a little paintbrush if you have one, or you can use a blender pen dedicated for the white craft ink because you'll never you're not gonna want to use this on any other inks because it just doesn't wash off very well. So reserve a blender pen for just the white craft ink. And we're gonna add some sea foam to the water's edge. And you're just gonna stipple it a little bit. Wherever you want that sea foam along the water's edge. You'll have to give this time to dry. I dried it with my heat tool, but I kind of like it dried nat naturally. I think it did better. So if you're in a hurry, then use your, your heat tool. If not, just let it sit. All right, that is pretty much it for the card. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the colors. Here's another tip. I don't want you to get ex too excited because unfortunately, this um, embossing folder retired in at the end of June, so it's no longer available. But for those of you that have it, um, the Tasteful Textile embossing folder, so if you have something similar to that, the old linen one would work really well too. Um, they don't have anything like this in the current catalog, which is kind of sad, but if you want some texture to this scene, of course, wait, make sure you do all your stamping first and you're totally done. Um, you can do this step before you apply the white sea foam if you want to, uh, or just wait till it's totally dry. Put it in the embossing folder and you will get a scene that's a little bit textured. So you can see that in the, I don't know if you can tell the difference in the camera here, between this one that is not texturized. So depends how you um, like the look or maybe you don't have an embossing folder that will give you that texture that you're looking for. Just a different technique and different option to give you some depth. I didn't think this card needed a whole lot so I just mounted it on some DSP paper that was complementary to this uh, background and Bermuda Bay cardstock and I added a little bit of linen twine, um, linen thread to it and that's it. So 
not very hard. It looks hard, but boy, is it impressive. So if you like what you've seen here, just give me a thumbs up and check out the description for all the products that I use. Thanks for joining me and uh, let me know what you think. Talk to you again soon. Bye.